Hi, viewer. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depending on where you are watching this from and when you are watching this, uh, this is me, Rahul, and that's uh, I'm Priyanka. So, with this entire series called Unboxed, what we try to do is bring our expertise from two different domains and try to bring it together and see if it makes sense. So, in my case, that would be trying to analyze personality traits mostly communication but if you zoom out a little bit i generally like studying personality traits and with priyanka it is relationships so relationships and personality traits well that was the light bulb moment for us and we thought why don't we come together and talk about the things that we're interested about and see if it makes sense and the topic of discussion well broadly on today's episode is the whole concept of self love being confused uh, to be narcissism we are going to be talking about that show this is a show on netflix which all of you can you viewers can watch it's called jigsaw by daniel sloss and i think sloss is one of the most underrated comedians with brilliant script writing he's he's i love him and i don't know if priyanka loves him the same amount but we yeah. watched this video together <laughs> we watched this stand up video together and we had lots of areas of uh, disagreements that we want to you know iron out on this on this video but before we get into that uh, please tell us priyanka how big a role does self love play in finding your soulmate if there is one or finding your partner yeah um i think in any relationship it is important to have very clear boundaries um it could be between your parents it could be with siblings it could be with your partner i think it's very important to have those boundaries and you can only establish those boundaries when you have some level of self awareness and you respect who you are and you know love is a very strong word or like love is a word that sells but if you are comfortable with who you are or who you aren't yet uh then i think uh you are able to have like clearer boundaries with other people right. otherwise you're you're always looking for validation externally if mm-hmm. you are not comfortable with who you are um right. and when relationships become about seeking validation uh it can be one sided a lot of the times and the other person might feel like they're not gaining too much value out of you um and it can become painful and you will see that the power in that relationship sort of becomes lopsided so i think it's really important for two individuals who are comfortable with each other to come together to be in a relationship because in order to start building something together you need to have two full parts of you to pick and choose from to build something together if there is nothing here then you're not going to be able to contribute to what you're building together There's yeah. an interesting point that you made there which is uh, relationships can become very toxic can can become echo chambers of validation if you are not mature about it and i've seen this so many times with the people around me where it's acceptable to say hey give me attention to call it out and say that they want attention and if you're in a relationship which is an echo chamber of validation and attention seeking like what does that say about you as a person in the initial days it might be termed as okay to call out and say that you you're looking for attention but as you go along how many days can you survive with just that amount of dependency on the other person to seek validation yeah i think you made an interesting point there right where you said if you're constantly craving for attention what does that say about you as a person and i think that is uh one of the things that most people are susceptible to doing where you associate an action you take with your personality where you can't distinguish between the two a lot of people all of us most of us go through phases where we're seeking attention or validation from someone else and that's okay and you may have that a lot more often than the other person in the relationship and you may have it a lot more often than you would like and it's okay but it's also important to remember that it's a proxy for something else it's the surface level a uh, picture of something else you may be seeking attention because you don't want to spend that time introspecting solving your own problem but you want to sort of distract yourself by someone else saying hey you know what you're awesome 
and you want to forget about that problem that you have you like that, that's how validation works right, right so right, right. it doesn't say too much about you because a lot of people go through it and most of us go through it it doesn't say anything separately like different about you mm-hmm. it's you cannot sustain a relationship just with both of you giving each other attention all the time have you been in such a relationship before where it was just an echo chamber of giving each other validation and then it died down uh, it, it happens all the time right like so i've i've been married for 10 years now over 10 years and i've been with my husband for 11 years and you do have moments of where you don't have much going on in each other's lives and you're constantly sort of seeking attention or validation from the other person but you kind of alternate Okay. When my husband's in that phase, I may not be in that phase and I may not be able to appreciate what he's going through and vice versa and it all depends on what else is going on with your life at that point of time. Uh mm-hmm. if there's very little going on, then you're constantly like trying to get someone else's attention to make your life juicy. You're trying to get an exciting jigsaw into your life of sorts. Um For me, my perspective, I may be like super old school. I feel like you've got to wait it out. You cannot be impatient and say okay, that's all. That's all this relationship is about. This person sucking the like a life out of me so I'm out of here. Like I felt like that was that was the view that Daniel was taking in his mm-hmm. uh, in his show. Uh I may have thought like him when I was 19 or 20. but i feel okay. because i've been in a relationship that's seen so many different phases i feel like sometimes you have to ride it out right right so priyanka this is something that's a uh, that, that's very interesting which i haven't disclosed so far which i haven't told you so far when i reached out to the other night and said hey priyanka i think you should watch this show i didn't tell you that i've watched this show six times with six different people oh. the same show Okay, interesting. So I know which segment comes at which minute and I'm bad <laughs> thorough with the entire show. Okay. And every time one of my friends is about to get into a relationship or is about to take a decision that could affect the way he or she lives the next few days of their lives, I end up doing a Netflix party with them and showing them the entire show and then ask them if they feel the same way. Uh and there have been times when I have sort of come in contact with people that either I'm seeing or you know I'm looking to see in the future. Sure. <laughs> This is the test that I put them through to see if they're still laughing at the end of it. The premise of this show is very simple. The show's title is called Jigsaw and Daniel Sloss says that everyone's lives is like a jigsaw jigsaw puzzle. But the problem is like in a jigsaw puzzle the box and the picture on the box is missing. so nobody knows what the final puzzle looks like and what you're doing every single day is constantly bloody guessing and you're doing this as confidently as the next person yeah so you're guessing towards that final image not knowing what it is right and every jigsaw puzzle there are some set rules you start on the borders because that's easy you can start on the borders and work your way towards the center and the borders are the four pieces the four pillars of your life which could be either your job the kind of people you meet um, the people your your social circle your friends then your parents then your relatives these pieces could change but every human has four pillars to their life and while you have the four pillars you work towards the center which is the piece that completes you and daniel sloss says that all of society has told us that this piece that completes us this center piece is the partner piece where this one person will magically come along fit into your life perfectly and make you a complete human being and until that point you feel incomplete and you are not a complete human he also says that sometimes we get impatient because the concept of love has been so um misinterpreted in society that we are more in love with the concept of love than the person we're with and this is cancerous so sometimes we get desperate and we take the wrong piece and jam it into our jigsaw hoping that it will fit clearly denying that it doesn't and this could be the wrong person or the wrong profession or the wrong piece that completes you 
you're just trying to jam it in jam it in jam it in hoping that it'll fit hoping that it'll be a complete human at the end of it and then 5 years later you end up looking at your jigsaw puzzle not recognizing who you are you stand in front of the mirror not knowing who you've become because you moved rest of the pieces away to make place for this one person or one centerpiece and none of your pieces in, make sense anymore and at that point you have a choice to make do you agree with the fact that the last few years of your life have been a waste or do you continue to waste the rest of your life i don't think it's as simple as that but it's a very interesting point to think about and he also says that every relationship is perfect for the first 3 months because of the entire excitement the warm fuzzy feelings of meeting a new person the interest of getting to know them and then they eventually die down and the simple things that you used to laugh and snick you know laugh and giggle at suddenly become annoying and we've seen that happen with so many of us either while finding the perfect partner or while getting into a relationship or even just while making friends and you find out a lot of the red flags after going down after walking down um a particular length of time together should you be open when you see a red flag and in this case the red flag is not loving yourself 100% if you're with a person you've enjoyed this honeymoon phase of your relationship you've found that both of you are totally into each other you're physically attracted to each other you're emotionally attracted to each other and 3 months later you see that there are a few red flags popping up among one among which one of them is the other person not loving themselves 100% and being a dependent human so if you were to draw yourself away or detach yourself away from this relationship this person could not exist alone they would sort of crumble down do you talk about something like this or is it something you would handle more deftly now i'll hand the ball back to you and wait for some, for some sage wisdom without actually taking the jigsaw reference if you have one person who loves themselves so much but another person who is not yet there in terms of the journey it is going to be treacherous it is going to be difficult but how that relationship pans out is not something that i can just predict saying okay you know it's not going to work one person will suck the life out, the, out of the other you never know in terms of how much they can give each other but if they're able to give each other and bring each other to the same place then you know it could work this happens with a lot of things not not just self love or like how much you love each other but even as simple as what kind of boundaries you have with your family right some people are very close to their family whereas their partners could be very distant with their family so just that difference in the level of boundaries with your own family can cause a lot of problems right you know if there is a guy who is very close to his mom but you know the girl is not very close to her mom they don't understand each other so apart from loving yourself if you've gone and above if you've gone above and beyond in terms of loving yourself where you can also empathize with other people because that's stage 2 one you love yourself you understand yourself stage 2 is you have enough in you to be able to watch someone else and understand what they're going through then you're able to help someone who's not yet at the same level as you but if you're just at the stage of oh i love myself and like you know i can't see anyone else then you can't help anybody else we look at self love as just us but that's not the end of it we're becoming a whole so that we can go out and sort of integrate with the society in some sense right so it can go any which way depending on whether the person who loves themselves is able to empathize or not the lot of people who can empathize with someone else without loving themselves they are all about helping somebody else and they don't like care about themselves at all it's kind of like the um flight analogy right where they say you know in case yeah. of a drop in as on the cabin yeah. mask yourself and then help somebody else yeah. first love yourself Mm. then you are able to empathize with someone else so i'll tell you what empathy is so uh, or like why i think empathy is so important in a relationship so when i work with people who've been through a marriage or been through a relation like a long committed relationship and they come out of it and often times uh, while they're able to acknowledge that the cause of a breakup was two sided and you know there were bits that this person didn't do and there were bits that that person didn't do and it was mutual 
they're not really able to fully see the other person's point of view you really have to push them into a corner and ask them hey how did that make you feel and you talk about their feelings and their feelings are dealt with and then you say if you were in that person's place in your partner's place how would you feel and you complete that piece as well and you've completely dealt with how this person feels and how they would have felt if they were in their place now you say okay now knowing your partner how do you think your partner felt differently from you like and then suddenly they're like oh that person could have actually felt differently from me and i had right. never thought about how they would have felt i kept right. thinking about how i would have felt differently in their place and i wouldn't have done what they did to me right like right. so i think that for me was very interesting like so i felt like empathy was the second stage of self love and to get there takes a lot of effort and that's why you know you need to have both it's not one without the other i have a slightly off beat question here and on the face value of it it may seem immature and um, you know naive but bear with me on this one being 24 years old you see a lot of people around you getting in and out of relationships and the term self love is most used right after the person's just out of a relationship and you know is feeling crippled and crumbles down into pieces you know goes to rock bottom and then they build themselves up back from that place right when they're in such a situation would you suggest that they empathize with their partner and see what they went through or let that spitefulness for the lack of a better word fuel them into the concept of self love help them find themselves uh, fuel them to you know go focus on their goals focus on their career focus on the other aspects of their life forget about this for a second and revisit this once you sort of built back up to a point or would you say when they're right out of a relationship is when you're when you're supposed to empathize with the other person what would you say same same philosophy first take care of your shit and then you know worry about other people right uh you will not be in a position to empathize with the other person if you haven't fully sorted yourself out right right um and also here's the thing right like um uh, i get the whole bit about you know use the breakup to fuel yourself to get back out there and become a whole and all of that that's not sustainable that's momentary like yeah. channeling the hurt and the betrayal and all of that into you know doing something go to the you, gym go yeah, to yoga yeah. can give you momentum it can like you know yeah. uh, keep you going for a month but if the focus is not on yourself and mm-hmm. it becomes very difficult for you to continue on that path now how do you help someone who's been out of a relationship and is now looking to get into a serious one and haven't yet completely healed from the previous relationship where they're still wounded and the wounds have been closed yet how do you help them with the concept of self love how do you help them discover this whole new concept that they haven't experienced before and no amount of rage about the previous relationship has been able to drive them to love themselves yeah. how do you then help this person find who they are before they find someone else yeah are there any yeah. techniques yeah so normally we do start with the previous relationship and the person itself because that's how you associate that's what you associate the anger or the hurt etc with right so you sort of it's almost like um you kind of open up that scab a little bit and go a little bit deeper and allow the person to fully um, express themselves because often times what happens is when you're hurt you're too busy trying to get up and you know pretend like everything's okay so that no one saw you get hurt including yourself you're so busy pretending that everything was fine that you often times don't bend down to check where your bruises are right if anything needs to be tended to right so a lot of the initial work is on checking where your bruises are 
like and going a bit deeper saying you know tell me about that hurt and like you know let's let's explore that feeling a little bit more and why do you think you felt that way or like why was this so important to you and you kind of go a little bit deeper so that it becomes personal it becomes about them and they're able to disassociate the bits that aren't anything to do with them if somebody let's say if someone betrayed your trust if someone cheated on you for instance it is not really always just about you and there is an element that has nothing to do with you and it takes a while to be able to disassociate that from yourself because you're constantly replaying in your head where you think okay could i have done something differently could i have like dressed better could i have spoken better like you know things like that where you because you're feeling a loss of control so you try making the entire situation about you and you start blaming yourself and you know do doing all of those things so through exploring your feelings you can start to disassociate what you did and what are yours and what is somebody else's and then you take what is yours and start to explore why you felt what you felt and then you start working from there to rebuild yourself and that has nothing to do with the other person right uh but it is not always easy to get to that place where you are able to completely distinguish what is because of you or what is your feeling versus what is somebody else but it takes a lot of time and effort which a lot of people don't put into this process which is why you see a lot of people who've been in one broken relationship take their anger and take whatever they've learned and inflict it on the next person and they hope to heal through a few terrible relationships So, so you're just leaving behind like piles and chunks of wreckage as you go along and yeah. inflicting other people. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Terrible. Yeah.